Welcome back to Geek Archaeology, where today I'm reviewing a graphic novel. We don't call them comic books, it's a graphic novel, right? Uh, called The World of Edina by Mobius, aka Jean Giraud. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, or Giraud, I'm not quite sure. Uh, famous French, or maybe Belgian, could be Belgian. Is he Belgian or French? Um, okay, France, good. People get really upset about those things. Um, legendary comic artist over in Europe. That'll be easy. And he did this, it was originally an advertisement for uh, Citroën, the car manufacturer. And um, you can tell because it's this really cool space adventure, um, beautiful artwork, um, you know, space stuff, very science fictional space stuff, uh, very um, kind of simple lines, very psychedelic color scheme especially as the story goes along. But um, as they're stranded on this place, and this is not a spoiler, um, uh, they, they need to travel across it, so what do they do? They find an, an old Citroen automobile and drive that across this weird planet. So it's, you know, it, this was basically made, um, it was actually financed, at least chapter one, by the, the Citroen organization as a promotional thing. Um, but Mobius basically really got inspired by this and ended up t doing this much longer graphic novel, uh, basically taking those two characters and pushing on from there. So this was made in the 80s, uh, started out in the, I think, the, the mid-80s, and uh, tells this big epic science fiction story. So they're traveling to different, different worlds, different societies, and exploring things, but there's also this weird sort of 60s psychedelic new age story in there of, you know, self-discovery and understanding yourself and so forth. Um, and Mobius makes full use of the comic medium to kind of explore um, that, that question of who we should be and, and the, the natural state of humanity. As such, there's lots of nudity. And I mean there's lots of nudity in this. Not constant, but pretty frequent, and it'll go on for pages. To be clear, it is almost entirely non-sexual. I said non-sexual. Because it, you know, it is meant more symbolically than anything else, but it is definitely naked characters, and it is full front and female, front and back female male nudity. So just be aware of that as part of these big stories. And so one of the neat things is you know, you'll get big, huge adventure stories in this, um, and you'll get some you know, sci-fi action stuff. It's really cool and interesting. Um, and there's the you know, weird philosophical stuff and weird kind of religious imagery and all that kind of stuff. It is a remarkable book. Here's the thing. So um, for some of you, when I said, you know, Mobius or European style comic art and science fiction epic, you were sold, right? That's the kind of thing you like, that's the kind of thing that interests you, go for it. Then you know, this is gonna, this is beautiful and absolutely worth it for that. There's this energy to the art that um, I think is, is really interesting combined with this weird sterility of some of these environments. Um, that said, the storyline is very John Lennon, peace and love, all we have to do is hold hands and make love not war and give peace a chance and all that kind of stuff. Just and there's a lot of it. And Mobius never really dives very deep into any of it. Uh, one of the disadvantages of this is that he, he kept coming back to this storyline and adding more to it over time. So there isn't a very strong driving storyline through it. It just kind of you know, goes from episode to episode and you know, things happening. Um, he does tie stuff in as time goes on. But it's more, this is on my mind, so I'm going to tell a story about that with these characters, than a really, you know, carefully written story all the way through. What's interesting is contrasting this to, sorry, uh, to Nausicaa the Valley of Wind by Hayao Miyazaki, where similarly Miyazaki started out with, with one story and kept on adding to it over the course of many years. 13 years, I think. 
uh, it took him to finish the story of Nordsk the Valley of Wind. But this is a much more tightly integrated story because while he did change what was going on over time, um, he still knew where he was going, and he was he was he was shifting around and reworking this existing you know uh, sort of large scale story he was working on, where he, where he didn't have all the details worked out. Whereas World of Adina feels more like I have this initial concept. I'm just going to keep adding to it every time and go off in a different direction every time. So it doesn't really hold together very, very well. It does return to the same themes over and over, um, but he will often introduce this an interesting concept, uh, an interesting theme in human society or civilization, and then never come back to it. So be aware of that. Um, I found that somewhat unsatisfying, but I was totally pulled along by the big story, and there was enough, there were enough philosophical concepts thrown in here and there, even if they didn't, even if you didn't get into too deep into them, to at least make the mind, you know, um, flash a little bit and, and work on those things a little, uh, a little here and there. So you know, don't expect a grand unified theorem of everything in World of Adina, but you know, like folks are saying in the chat room, if you're looking for something um, different, something artistically remarkable, and I'm trying to be very careful when I open this because I can, you know, we can suddenly flip to something that is definitely not safe for work. Um, but you get these really lovely moments and lovely images all throughout it, and I'm trying to avoid spoilers as well. Um, there's humor, there's drama, there's action. Um, he really does manage to bring a lot of different things together in World of Adina. So, you know, full props on that. Also, I should point out that one of the one of the strengths is that the art style does vary quite a bit, where, you know, sometimes it is very it is very stark in some of these societies because it is a stark society. And he's getting across this sort of bureaucratic, um, very red tape organized society. And so the art becomes that. And other times when it's much more lush and open. So full props there. Again, FYI, I generally don't do a, you know, buy it, rent it kind of a thing, but this is the kind of thing where if you find it in the, in the library, that'd be a good place to start. You know, uh, I would not spend, you know, whatever it would be, 30 $40 on this. It's, so it, it's $50 retail, which means you're going to spend probably 30 35 on it online. Um, you know, I would, I probably would not jump into that if that, if what I've told you doesn't excite you. But definitely, if, if the art style and the concepts interest you, give it a glance. And I think you'll find some interesting stuff there. So, hope you find that useful and helpful. And until next time, I hope you can dig deeper into the stuff that you love.